Do you teach using case studies and using data? Are you looking for a way to make that data come alive for your students? I'm Matt Salamone, and I want to introduce you to the interactive case study. This short video introduction will help you to understand what it means to make a case study or set of data interactive. We'll also be able to discuss the pedagogical benefits of interactive tools, both for disciplinary understanding and for quantitative literacy. And last but not least, you'll get to learn how to design and create a simple interactive case study yourself using Microsoft Excel. An interactive case study begins its life as a data set, often accompanied by a visual aid, and that visual and that data set is then able to change, recalculate, and redisplay based on user input. Why would we want to do such a thing? Well, interactive case studies can easily facilitate the exploration of key critical thinking questions such as why, what if, and what else. They're also an inquiry-based approach for students to experiment and learn, and are designed well for multiple different learning preferences. They can facilitate students' understanding of the discipline because they're more engaging and provide more active learning for students than a static data set does. And also, they can really help students' quantitative literacy because it helps them to focus on big idea, number, and statistical concepts instead of getting lost down the rabbit hole of computation, all within a context that necessitates those critical quantitative ideas. So let's create an interactive case study. I'm starting out with this paper on personalized mathematics word problems and how they help students' performance in fourth grade math. Here's a table inside of this article that I'd like to make interactive for students that just show the results of personalized versus non-personalized word problems. Step one is to reconstruct that table inside of Excel. So I'm just going to, as faithfully as I can, copy all of the column headings, row headings, and all of the numbers from this table uh, inside a blank Excel spreadsheet. The second thing I need to do then is look at the various numbers inside of that table and choose some of them to be what I call lever quantities. These are going to be the quantities that students are able to manipulate directly. For example, the sample size. This will allow me to ask students to investigate the effect of changing a sample size on the conclusions that are made inside of this paper. Once we've chosen those lever quantities, then we need to look at what other quantities in this table will have to change when those lever quantities change. In this example, if I change the sample size for this survey, then this t-statistic quantile will also have to change. So in Excel, I'm going to have to make that a formula and use cell references, one of which is that sample size, to determine its value. Because this was a paired t-test, I also need the number underneath that 42 to be the same as the one in there. And the p-value that's computed from the t-statistic quantile in this table also has to be updated whenever that sample size changes. So the question to ask yourself is, when the students change this lever quantity, what else in this table will have to change? Now to make it actually interactive, the first thing you'll need to do if you've never done this before is to enable the ribbon to have the developer tab inside of Excel. This is something, again, you only have to do the first time you use one of these form controls. But in Excel 2010, 2011, and later, uh, you can enable that just from the Preferences menu. Or if you're using a PC, it would be under Excel Options. If you have something called Developer on the ribbon, then you're set to go. So we'll choose from the Developer ribbon the Scroll Bar control because I want students to be able to scrub through different values of the sample size, and then just click and drag to drop that scroll bar right into the document. Now that the scroll bar is there, we have to actually hook it up to do something. I'll right click on it, choose to format the control. The current value is where the slider is going to start, and I'll use the value from the paper itself, 42. Then I need to give Excel a minimum and a maximum value. How low and how high do you want the slider to go? Let's say we take it from 5 up to 200, so those are going to be the possible sample sizes that we can use when students scrum through this. Now to make the link between that scroll bar, I'll click on the cell link and then choose that cell that contains my lever quantity. Clicking on OK will then make this an active form control. And if I click on it and scrub it back and forth, then the value in that linked cell will change along with it. As you can see, as I vary the sample size, predictably the error bars are getting wider and shorter as we would expect them to statistically. So now we have an interactive case study. It's worth noting, though, that by default, scroll bars can only change by integer values, whole numbers. If I want to affect a non-whole number quantity like the mean score, then I should create an extra cell that, to contain an integer value that I then scale back. Here, because I want my mean score cell to count by 0.01s, I'll just create an integer value that I then divide by 100 and have the slider control that integer value. So now I can vary the mean score by intervals of 0.01. And because this is a fully interactive case study, everything, including the conclusions of the study, change when we vary the sample size and when we vary the mean score. If you want to see two more examples of interactive case studies, I have two online embedded in a web page using a Google Charts API. The first asks, how is Simpson's paradox even possible? And the second is an investigation of how to describe income inequality using two different kinds 
of graphs. Good luck and happy interacting.